So today, we're going to be talking about the American media revolution, or the so-called, right? So, the way I bring this up is, it's kind of like, um, so for example, when you have limited amounts of access to certain media sources, you have a tendency, and if all of them are saying similar things, you have a tendency to believe those things. The reason is that when you ideas are a formulated are formulated from uh, from uh, way new ways to use certain things right and again I'm gonna and we're about to go to the power of editing so ba so basically when you look at it right and this is important because the Windows 95 was the first operating system you could use to like to search things without having to run a um, bunch of key terms, a bunch of all these different things, right? Uh, so, when I bring that up, it's because prior to Windows 95, the, the, the really the only way you could get your, your news sources and the what your media is from was from uh, the television, newspapers, and that's pretty much it. Like, you know, so because of the limitations of media, what you pre Windows 95 at a minimum, what you have is a very centralized form of media. So when all you hear is certain narratives, you 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 can't think of and you don't you can't work around it on why not because if all all the information you have in your hand is this is you know is this is why this is bad, you can't do a, a thorough counter on it and so again that's why all these corporate powers want to get all upset now that w technology has advanced that's why they hate google that's why they hate uh all these social media platforms right like they like uh like mainstream media because they used to have a monopoly on your voice they used to be able just to because you would have no way to speak to the broader world you know and uh, this is the first time we've really had freedom of speech on on a big scale with uh, Google and then the start of YouTube and we're about to get into that too. So then this is why like you know YouTube is so such a big thing right and we, we didn't have this until 2005 so like if you think about it like we didn't have this until like the later part of Gen Z, like the later part of Gen Z, probably grew up with you without, you know, was born before YouTube. But like, and I think that's crazy to think about because again, what YouTube allowed you to do was upload content and uh, allow you to, you know, through Google you could research things, you could uh, look up scientific studies, you could watch. Uh, now at least now. YouTube, you can watch scientific stuff, you can watch the scientists talk about their studies, you can watch all these things, so you can be like, yeah, no, Rupert Murdoch, you're a fucking lying sack of shit, uh, yeah, no, yeah, uh, you know, J.P. Morgan, you want to fund Fox News and CNN, fuck you, we're not listening to, you know, we know what's going on here, right, and so when that happens, you, now, they're kind of in a frenzy, because, with YouTube, it's like, they don't really, like, they don't have the control they used to. And it's kind of like a power-hungry dictator who's, you know, like the Emperor's now, everyone's starting to see the Emperor has no clothes, right? So I think that's a massive factor, too, in the way that we, um, we view media and the way now we have people who want to work around media and all these things, right? And again... I think people, when they talk mess about YouTube and all these different platforms, I, I don't think that they realize that they these platforms allow your mouth to not be controlled. They allow your mouth to be able to speak, right? And, and I think that matters a lot, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, different political groups can be upset about YouTube banning people, Facebook, Instagram, all these things, right? But at the end of the day, you know, what it comes down to is you're still freer with 
YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all these things than you were prior to these platforms. And I think, like, you still have to give them credit for at least that, right? So just, you know, and then, uh, and so we're going to go, okay, and so, so now we're going to go to how thoughts are formed, right? So it's just the brain, nervous, uh, the nervous system shoots out, pings different signals, you know, and those signals are what your thoughts are. Now, the brain can only ping signals if they, based on memory or, um, or other things, to, or other things around you, right? Like, so, like, that's kind of why, like, again, maybe pulling grass was an idea. Maybe no one did it, but the, but the brain would go, what would happen if I, what would happen if I grabbed a thing of grass and just yanked it, right? Because the grass is there. You can see the grass, right? And so what ends up happening is these media sources, if they all say similar things, just different reactions, right? If they can control the narrative, which is what, which is what honestly they want, right? Like, they don't want you and the people of, you know, what whatever uh, country they run that specific media company in, they don't want you to be, like, uh, like, focusing on what harms them. That's why they control the narrative, right? That's why they run all the papers. That's why all of the YouTube media uh, basically just... Or not all the YouTube media, all of the regular media, all the mainstream media. That's why they have all the papers, right? Because YouTubers react to those papers. It'll be like, uh, Tim Pool reacts to a New York Times article. Uh, Destiny reacts to, uh, Fox News, or, or, you know, or something similar to that. They control the narrative. And so, what happens when they control the narrative, people are going to pick sides. Instead of reading through the lines and being like, yeah, you know what? This is dumb, right? The trans stuff, the, the, the trans, the transgender stuff, that's 4.5% of the population it affects. So, like, 96.5% of the population is unaffected by that. But because they can push these narratives en masse, and because they control what the conversation is, and so they they can direct your attention away from, for example, in America, the studies that really prove Medicare for all, right? That's how they can discredit scientists. That's how they can do all these things, right? Instead of just, instead of it being an anecdotal mistake, they turn that into, see, you can't trust these scientists. Why? Because they don't want you, they want you to focus on that. They want you to focus on, uh, do you hate these scientists or not? And they want you, it's tribalism, basically. And, uh, I'm gonna go over it's tribalism right now and how it affects. Now, again, according to this it's a study, it's just like humans are in context, in the context of intense intergroup competition and the group's Compromise of loyal members succeed, then other groups compromise of non-loyal members. So basically, what's happening is, the way they do it is they'll use that, like, that, that, uh, the left is gonna all be, they're gonna try and direct the left to one side, the right to one side, and what ends up happening is, it's, a uh, it, it plays on the, uh, like, if you're in a tribe, you can't have non-loyal members to the tribe, right? Like, from what we're talking, like, early, uh, human... Uh, early human, you know, eras, right? So, in order to survive, you had to stick together, right? You had to nomadic eras, you know, stuff like that. And so, but it's, but because we haven't evolutionally grown out of that, uh, what ends up happening is they can use that prehistoric function, that like that 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 evolutionary function, to direct people into taking one side or another, and basically. Uh, self-insulate themselves with a specific crowd when the reality may be completely different, but that's how they play the psychological games with, with, uh, with the people who watch them. Not only that, with their viewers, with their, uh, you know, and they all know damn well, uh, that they're all funded by private insurance or big banks. And, um, Oh, and uh, the third thing in America, because they can, and I think in America and New Zealand, is that they basically will go from uh, from from one area to another. You know, from uh, in America, you can have these massive pharmaceutical companies that could pump billions of dollars into the media. 
That's why in America we have NBC is funded by all these big pharma companies. Of Fox News is funded a bunch by private insurance as well as big banks. CNN is funded by big banks. I made a video on that uh, earlier uh, before and I'm going to link it in the description. Uh, it's called The Virus and I highly recommend checking that out because it shows you why they don't work for you, they work for their people, they work for their advertisers. And their advertisers are evil companies. But, uh, yeah, so that's how they basically divert your attention. That's why I stress this all the time, I do not believe in left and right. I believe left-wing and right-wing are just this in action with the media. They'll be like, if you're right-wing, you have to believe this. If you're left-wing, you have to believe this. And so what happens is nobody really looks into the matter, right? I just figured I'd make this video real quick, talking about how the media is used to di to divide us, how it's you uh, how it's being used more or less as a as a uh, as a tool of deception, as a tool of just pure evil, you know, uh, and like it just it, you know it's a really bad tool. I think all those people are absolute goblins, uh, goblins and ghoulies, you know, they're, they're Halloween looking motherfuckers, like, they are, yeah, like, these are powerful people, and, again, you'll never hear that from people who decide to, who decide to pick an eye of, I'm the conservative, I'm a liberal, I'm a leftist, these people buy into these narratives, and they don't understand how these things actually work, and why they believe certain things, right, and why they're accustomed to believing these things, right, but again, I think I'll make this video documenting why I personally think the media are a bunch of paid, paid off sellouts who are, who are here to cause self-destruction in society, and I absolutely hate their guts. You know, I, I hate them. I, 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 I usually don't use the word hate a lot, but I have genuine hatred for people who manipulate people who do not know better and are and the, their main sponsors a lot of the time well at least on two the on cnn and fox their main sponsor are jp morgan chase and so like you're gonna get funded by a company that made tens of million people homeless but you get to moralize sorry you're a fuckwit bye peace